All right, so there's just a couple quick more things I want to do as we get used to hash maps. So the first thing is, well, how do we loop through the whole thing? So what we can do actually is get back something called the key set, which is all of the keys that I put in here. So let's do that first. So we'll say that we just set up this whole thing. We put in all the students, the first name is the key, and the object is the value. So if I say system.out.println student map dot key set, so this is a method that's part of the hash map class, this will print out an object called a set, which has all the names. So there they are. See already, this is kind of neat because I didn't have to make a new array to hold these names. Just by filling in the, this hash map, I already get that list. Okay, but how do I loop through it? Uh, it turns out there's actually a bunch of ways, but just to start off, I'm going to teach you something called the enhanced for loop for looping through sets. And in a couple of weeks, we'll talk about something else called an iterator. But for now, let's use the enhanced for loop. So what we have to say is for string first name colon. So I'm just going to call it first name student map dot key set. Okay, so now I'll just now I'll just print out the first name. So I can I can call this whatever I want. It's just like with the for loop, with the regular for loop. I'm just declaring some value, and that will change as I go through the different keys. So let's just see that. So now I'm going to print each name out on its own line. And now you see, okay, so cool. That's looping through all the keys. Now, if I wanted, I could actually get the object at this point. So I could look up the objects and I could say student, student equals student map dot get and then the key. So this is how I could loop through the values instead of the keys. So I loop through the keys, but then I use those keys to look up the values with the dot get. So now this should print out the two string for the objects. Okay, so now see we're printing out all the objects. So that's how you loop through the keys and values in a hash map. I usually won't need to do that, right? Because you can look things up more quickly than looping through the whole thing, but, but sometimes you will. Okay. Now let's just do one more little variation here. So what if, okay, so fine. I was looking up the students by the first name and then in your activity, I had you look them up by their last name. But what if I want to look up the student by their age? So here I'm going to have to organize things a little bit differently. So I'll, I guess I'll keep this array as it is. Let me see. So one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> I'm gonna make. Let me make this more equal. So I'll say, okay, the first five are 15, the next five are 16, the next five are 17, and the last five are 18. Okay. So now what I want actually is I want to look up not just one student, but I want the whole array of students who are of a particular age. So now I'm gonna look up by by a number and actually this is expecting a class so i can't use a primitive type which is a little bit annoying so for the key i have to specify what's called a wrapper class but for all intents and purposes it's just like an int i can say integer x equals 10 and java knows how to deal with that so it really is just an int it's just the class version of an int okay fine all right so we're going to look them up by their age uh, but what we, what we should get back actually is an array of students. Okay, so let's make that happen. So how would I do that? Well, okay, so let's just set them up one at a time. So I'll say student freshman, or I'll say student uh, 15 year olds equals new student five, right? I said there are five of them. So I'll say four into i equals five. So let me fill up the array. I equals zero, I is less than five, I equals plus. And then I'll say 15 year olds at index i is equal to s at index i. Okay, now I can go ahead and actually put that array. So I'll say student math dot put 15. So that's my key now, their age. 
and I'm going to put that array, 15 year old. So what I should get back is actually an array of students. Let me just spell this out. Okay. Okay, good. There we go. And now I'll do similar things for the other age groups. So this will be 16 year olds. It's also going to have five students. They're actually the next five. So actually I'll say 16 year olds at index i is, is asset index i plus five. I'll put that in the array or in the uh, hash map. And let me just finish this up real quick. So focus on what I'm doing here. I'm making an array, which is going to be the value. Um, this array is going to have five elements. And I'm just copying over. I'm copying out chunks of this big array here into these little arrays. So this actually starts at an, at an offset of 10. So index 10 is my first 16-year-old here. Oh, sorry, my first 17-year-old. That's what I'm on to here. So I got my 17-year-olds. Now I can put the key as 17 and the value as this array. OK, last one. We'll do the 18-year-olds. And they are actually at an offset of 15. So 18. All right. Now, be careful when you copy and paste code. You have to change everything. See, it's giving me a warning there because I never used 18-year-olds, but okay. That meant I had to change the name. Okay, so this set up the whole thing for me. So now I can say something like, all right, well, let me guess. We'll say, if I say studentmap.get16, and then I can index that with three. So that's going to give me the third student who's a 16 year old, or sorry, the fourth student at index three. So if I run this, well, that's our favorite, Juju Smith, right? So he is, so we start, he should be the fourth student who is 16. So we say one, two, three, four, there we go. Okay, so that makes sense. What if I go to the student at index two who's 18? Okay, that gives us Michael Jordan. So let me see. So so index zero, index one, index two, there we go. All right, so the last five students are 18. Michael Jordan is at index two there. Okay, so, so now we're getting a look pretty fancy because we can actually look up an entire array, not just a single object. And this will come handy, come in handy in our next lab and our next assignment. So I wanted to show that. But now I wanted you to just do a quick exercise where you tell me actually how many students are there of each age group. And then we'll be finished this module.